Okay, so uh, we're going to get into it. So just before we go out to the mall and go minister today, so I'll, we plan on leaving here maybe around 11 or so and then going to the mall maybe till 1 to go minister. And the last time uh, we did this, what, it was like, what, two years ago, Mike? Went to the mall? Three, two or three years? Yeah, and then we, we witnessed about, I think, anywhere from like 14 to 20 people getting saved the day we went out uh, to the mall. And it was like a smaller, way smaller group than this. It was maybe like, what? Like eight of us, Giselle? Eight to ten of us? I didn't go. I heard about it. You heard about it? Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but it was powerful, though. And uh, it, was, it was really good. So, you know, looking for God to do some amazing things again today. Um, you know, soul winning is the most important thing in your Christian life. And I think that so many times as Christians, we get so caught up in what we can get for us, get for us, get for us, get for us all the time that we're just stuffing ourselves and looking for more and more stuff for us. And it's really not about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you do what God tells you to do, it's going to encompass what you're looking for and what you need. That's what he said in Matthew 6, right? He said, don't worry about your life, Amen. about things you're going to eat, drink, and do all those different things. But if you first seek my kingdom and my righteousness, these things will be given to you. So he tells you right there, if you go out and do what he tells you to do, you have these things you keep praying and asking for. You won't have to pray, but he said the Father knows what you have need of for even asking. You see? So if he's telling you to lift others up, that means he's going to put you in a position to help people come out. That means he's going to elevate you. Does that make sense? But the, we, we keep spinning our heels and going, well, God, I will, but I need, I, I don't have, well, that's that's why you don't. Because <laughs> you're not functioning by the kingdom. You function by carnality and what you see versus what he says. And so that's one of the biggest problems. So, But evangelism is the most important thing. It's, it's the number one thing in the kingdom. Amen. You see, it's so. That's why he died. He didn't die for nice houses, nice cars, for money and all that stuff. He died for us. You see, and we have to bring that back. And because, you know, I know we do a lot of things that we pray for the sick here. We prophesy here. God has blessed us in a lot of gifts and abilities. We give. We help financially. We've been blessed to do a lot of different things in our small circle. Uh, And I don't take that for granted, but we have to get back to why we're Christians. You know, we're not here just only to make sure everyone's okay. We're here to bring in souls for the kingdom, bring people out of darkness into the light. That's why we're here. And if you haven't won souls for Christ, you need to get started, you know, because God's going to ask you, what did you do with the life I've given you? Who did you share this with? Who did you pray for? Who did you bring into the kingdom? Well, just myself. Well, that's that's not, you know, that. but oh, is it all you did with all your years? It's just you? That's all you have? All the fruit you bear is just you? You see, yeah, <laughs> you know, so all that time you've been feeding yourself and, and not sharing with anyone else. Yes. I like this thing that went around a long time ago on email and some pastors tell from the pulpit. But uh, this guy gets to, to heaven and and he's looking around and he goes, oh, where's, you know, where's so and so? Where's Susie? Where's John? Where's so? And God says, didn't you bring him? Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's scary, right? Yeah. You look around and like, okay, you're responsible for it, right? I mean, it's true. And, and I think that's why it's so important that we bring this to reality and we go out and do these things today. Because someone ministered to us, whether it was the Holy Spirit or someone shared the gospel, a pastor or a family mm-hmm. member or a friend or someone we went to, a, 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 we were out somewhere, someone spoke to us about it. You know, we someone took the time to minister to us. You know, and so that's what we're supposed to reflect. He said, freely you receive, freely you give. So we need to, in turn, uh, show God our gratitude by going out and sharing that with other people. Does that make sense? And and so what the beautiful thing people understand is when you learn to do this, God will increase the grace and the glory on your life. He will multiply the prophetic. He will multiply healing. He will multiply the finance. He will multiply all those things. Why? Because you're out doing, you're working for him. You see, that's the secret. So a lot of times I don't really have to pray about a lot of things because I know if I just do what he tells me to do, it's going to accomplish that. He knows I need things to, to help people. He knows I need a word. He knows I need these things. So, But if I'm not going out doing those things, why would, why, did he, why would he release more into me? Why would he give me more? Just for my own self-gratification? No. Amen. You're asking for things for own, your own gratification. You're not asking it for other people. But if you're asking on behalf of other people, who knows the story of Solomon in here? Who's familiar with that story? When God, when 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 uh, God asked him, he said, he said, what do you want from me? He said, he said, yes for anything. He and he asked for wisdom, but what kind of wisdom? For the people, for the people, not for himself. It was, he said, God, well, who can lead your people without your mind? I need your wisdom to lead them. It wasn't for him to be the smartest guy and brag about it. He did it with a purpose of helping other people. And God 
was so pleased with that that he gave him and he's and guess what he was already wealthy he was already a multi-billionaire from his dad's inheritance he was already a king's kid so it wasn't a need that god was doing that for money god gave him that on top of what david gave him and left him to build the temple he had millions and billions of dollars worth of materials to build a temple with so if he had that in possession just to build a temple how much did he have in his kingdom so God didn't consider what he already had. He said, because you asked me for this, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to give you wealth untold. Mm-hmm. You see? And he didn't ask for that. He asked just for wisdom to lead God's people. You see? So if you learn to get on God's way of thinking and do God, things God's way, those things that you keep praying and fretting over and, mm-hmm. and afraid of, mm-hmm. you'll just have them. Yeah, we um, watched this documentary the other night on Billy Graham. Mm-hmm. Amazing documentary, man, and and to see the impact he made around the world, mm-hmm. man. That, that I think it's like a, a plaza with a half a million Chinese standing there watching him preach, and Russia, where he had prayed and prayed that he would be able to go into that territory and pray and bring people to Christ, and people were hanging out of the trees and the, over the balconies and just filling the place because. <coughs> He, he was bringing what God wanted, you know, and, and, and um, you know, I didn't even realize the man was 100 years old when he passed. Wow. And he was such a huge influence on so many of the presidents and so many of the world leaders because he went and brought the gospel. You know, he was an evangelist, man, crusade after crusade after crusade. And I was just in awe of the things that he did. And I'm like, look at the people. Not just in this country. I mean, the, the other countries, man, the, the, the masses were even greater than the stadiums that he was packing in this country. I was like, it was just unbelievable. And, and at a very young age, he knew that God was calling him to go out and bring the gospel to people, you know. And it was, you know, the, from the way it started in Los Angeles where he was in tents and these tent, this, this tent revival was just taking off and people were just packing outside of, um, outside the tents in Los Angeles and, and it, it was starting to make news and he was on all the, I mean, it, he was like one of the first ones that they actually televised when people were watching on their little bitty TVs and watching this man preach the gospel to people and telling them that God gave his son for you and to, you know, and that, that he loves you. And, you know, it was just, it was unbelievable, man, just to watch the, the, the documentary that they put together on him. But it was a life, man, that I, I, I believe, man, that, that um, any Christian should admire and desire to live that type of life. And then, mm-hmm. you know, all I could think of was, Lord, look at the treasures that, that this man has stored up That's it. in heaven for you. You know, and the people mm-hmm. that he's brought. It was just unbelievable. Praise you know, God. You get a chance, it's on Netflix, but it's yeah. an amazing documentary to watch. Yeah, I know that really inspired you, Mike. That's what oh, you yeah. are. <laughs> so, uh, praise God. So, okay, so we want to go into Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 20, okay? So it's a... It's a different rendition of when Jesus gave the Great Commission to the uh, to the disciples, okay? And so we wanna we wanna go into that and just hit refresh on that for us, okay? So who wants to who wants to read uh, Mark 16, 14 through 20? Giselle? Okay. Mike, you can get the next one. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were gonna just like No, no, no. <laughs> well, I really don't have many scriptures today. Sixteen what? Uh, Mark 16, 14 through 20. So this is when Jesus came back from the dead and he met back with his disciples. Uh-huh. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. <laughs> he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mm-hmm. Whoever believes is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. 
Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Amen. Good. Okay, so if you go back to verse uh, 15. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Okay, so go into all the world and, and preach the gospel to all creation, meaning don't wait for people to come to you. Mm. Go. Yes. You see, we're waiting for people to come to us and say, okay, God, if you want me to do this, then you'll make this person. That it happens sometimes, but he said, go. Go. Okay? Go out. Talk. Build relationships. Get to know. Go. Go. You know? Yeah, to the whole world, right? And then he says what? Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Uh-huh. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Okay, so that means some people are going to receive your message. Some people won't. Okay, he's telling you. So if people are telling you no, don't get discouraged. He's telling you right there that some people are going to say yes, some people are going to say no. But we have responsibility to share the gospel. You see? And, and, and so he's telling us right there, you're going to get some rejections, you're going to get some yeses. Like, you know, those who work in sales like Andrew, you're going to get some rejection, right? But it, but does that mean you're not supposed to be doing what you're doing? You doing you made a mistake in getting that job, right? Because you heard a no. No, it, it's, just, it's part of the job, right? Okay, but look at what he says. And as you go, this is what he gonna do, he gonna he's gonna do through you. That's that's the amazing part. He's gonna confirm mm -hmm. that what he what you're doing and saying and what is true through signs and through wonders. You see, because the gospel is not complete without the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh huh. Keep reading. Yes. And these signs will accompany those who believe. Okay, and these signs will accompany those who believe. Those who believe. Those who believe it. You have to believe what you're sharing with people. Mm. <laughs> I can't tell you good news and say, hey, God is a healer. And you're like, okay, my back's bad. So, well, to help you out. Do you want to believe in Jesus or not? You don't? Oh, you do? Okay, that's good. But, yeah, he'll do something about your back. Thank you. You know, and because all we do is celebrate that part, which is fantastic because the angels celebrating when people receive salvation. But it's not good news until you demonstrate it. Yes. You see? And today experience it. You know, it's like me telling somebody, okay, I'm going to give you $100. All right, yeah, yeah. And they never get it. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, come back next Saturday, I'll give you $100. All right, come back next Saturday, I'll give you $100. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not, it, you know, they'll lose hope after a while. Yeah. Right? And then you have someone who's become a religious person, someone who's checked the box, but goes and lives any kind of way. You see? That's what we're doing. When we don't share the Holy Spirit with them, and just give them just the word only, they'll go back to doing and being who they were before. Just enlightened on something, you know? Does that make sense? And it's very dangerous. So guys, don't be afraid to let God use you. Don't be afraid to allow the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter what your situation, condition is. It says, these signs will follow those who believe. Mm -hmm. Right? In fact, we need those signs. Even Jesus, the Son of God, God himself, needed those signs. Yes, ma'am. a miracle to demonstrate the kingdom, mm -hmm. how he much did. more we need that. Right, and even after all that, his disciples still were doubting him, right? Mm -hmm. He never lied, never did anything. I mean, he did everything he said, and they still were like, no, nah, he's not back. He's not. And then he showed up and rebuked him. <laughs> so don't feel bad when you missed the mark with Jesus. It wasn't that bad, you know? <laughs> you know? So, so, but it's true, woman of God. It, and, and so, um, you know, and it's so important. He says that we will cast out devils. That's the first thing he says. See, Christians are so afraid of the devil. We're so afraid of the devil. Why are you so afraid of somebody that's underneath your feet? It's, the, it's what God says about it. He said, Jesus said, I've given you my authority. But yet we're afraid. We're scared. Scared to go to bed. Scared to go do things. Scared to go out at night. You know, it's like, what is the purpose of why you believe what you believe? Do you really believe it? You see? God's not giving you a spirit of fear. So when, when someone goes, oh, well, you don't want to say that because the devil's going to get you. Let him come. <laughs> I, I'm not afraid of my kids. I got a sword for you. You know, that's like my kids telling me, I'm coming for you. Well, come on. <laughs> you see, it's no different. You see, he's underneath your feet. But if you if you walk around in that kind of fear and not in that lack of understanding, that's what the word says. My people perish because of lack of knowledge, not because of the devil. He said he walks around as a lion devouring who we can. So when you agree with him is when he defeats you. Because when you're attacking your health, it's not really you're not really sick. 
it's your faith concerning health is under attack. Right? When you're struggling financially, you're not really poor. The Bible says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet he became poor, so to his poverty you may be rich. So if the word is telling you that you're rich, what's wrong? Deception. Oh, yeah. And so, so you're rich, but you're not seeing it in your bank account, so you're not proclaiming it because you don't possess it. Mm-hmm. You see? But your faith is really your possession. Mm-hmm. You see? And so, so your faith about finances is what's under attack. You know, your relationship is broken, but it's your faith concerning marriage is what's under attack. You see what I'm saying? The Bible says fight the good fight of faith, not the good fight of health, not the good fight of finances, not the good fight of, but the fight of faith. The faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence, the proof of things what? Not seen. You see that? And so God tells you these things. So when these, the, 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 the opposite happens, you won't give up. You'll be like, oh, God told me that I, I have this. I possess this. You see that? Uh, someone pull up Galatians 4 1. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. And you're right, baby, it's deception. It really is. He's trying to get your focus and draw your faith from what you see. And the Bible says to just shall live by what? Faith. <laughs> what I am saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole state. You hear that? What I'm saying is, even though he's an heir, even though he's the rightful ruler, the rightful king and queen, that person's no different than a slave. No different than a slave, even though you, it, you really are. Because the underage, meaning immaturity, our lack of knowing this and living this is what keeps us in bondage. You say you should know the truth and the truth should make you what? Free. And who's the truth? Jesus. Who do you know? So why are you in bondage? If that's true, then why am I in bondage? And not, and not applying it. Lack of knowledge and applying it. Right? That's the only reason. The Holy Spirit did not come and dwell in you just for you to live a defeated life. God did not die just for you to live the same way you did before you got saved. That's not the reason the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. You see? That's why it says, greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. Why? Because Jesus lives in you. The Bible says Christ dwells in your heart through faith. But if you don't live with that mindset, you'll always be defeated. You'll always be crying about something you have authority over. Because you have, it has become revelation and to you. Does that make sense? Y'all have seen me face different trials and different things. Have I changed? Have my circumstances at all changed me? You've seen me go through a plethora of things before your eyes. And, and I've stayed the course. Why? Because I have a revelation of what's in me. <laughs> That's greater than what I'm facing. <coughs> you see? So, so I want you guys to understand that and get that. So when you go out here and, and share these people you don't know, and when all this mental stuff comes up, well, I've never done this, and I don't know what's going to happen, and you know, the, the whole thing we go through before we do something. Think about that for a second. That Christ lives in you. And who out there needs that love? Who needs that encouragement? Who needs that support? Think about how it was for you. Stop thinking about yourself so much. You know? Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. So who? So your attitude should be, who can I serve today? Amen. You know? Not, well, I don't know. What if, if I don't save souls today, then I failed. No. It's not that. You have to get started. Okay? All right. So thank you, Giselle. So four steps of discipleship. I want to go through that. So the way in the gospel is Jesus, he, he showed us uh, four main things of how he uh, trained the disciples. OK, four things. OK, first of all, he shared the gospel. Right. He shared the gospel. OK, he preached and he demonstrated the gospel. So when you guys are in positions of ministering to people, you must be a product of the gospel. You must be a person who knows the word and who shares the word, and who lives the word. OK, that's the first prerequisite. OK, you must share the gospel and demonstrate it. OK. All right. And then as they as they as they receive the message, then you start you start to uh, you, you you start to disciple them. You start to teach them when Jesus was given the Beatitudes. The crowds was there. But in Matthew five, if you read it, um, so I pull up Matthew five. One, I want you all to see something there. Matthew uh, chapter five, verse one. I want you to see something there. 
The, it's the Sermon on the Mount, right? Yeah. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and, yeah, came to him. he said just one, right? Yeah, just one. He came to them. You hear that? Mm-hmm. So he saw the crowds. They were coming. But then he turned around on the mountainside and sat down and he started talking to his disciples. You see, this sermon was not for the crowds. It was for his disciples. He was teaching them. What did he say in verse two? And he began to teach them the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, uh-huh. The Beatitudes. He said, and then he goes into verse Yeah, go ahead. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right. So meaning now, in a worldly sense, you saw these people as condemned, people who didn't love God because of the Pharisees. But now let me tell you how God really sees these people. You see, he's telling them he's reprogramming their mindset because the Pharisees that taught them this is the way God wants things done. He was like, no, this is how God sees the poor. This is how God sees the brokenhearted. This is how God sees these kind of people. So you won't shun them because remember, they were keeping the kids away from him. They were keeping the sick away from him. (laughs) Why? Because of the example of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. They didn't pray for the sick. Mm -hmm. They didn't give to the poor. So that was the subconscious brainwashing that they had. They were mimicking. He was teaching them the right way how God really sees his people. You see that? He sat down and he was talking to his people. He wasn't ministering to the crowds. We've always been taught that he was preaching this to the crowds. No, he wasn't. He was talking to us. So that way we won't come off with this arrogant, prideful standpoint of talking to people who are not affluent, who, who don't have things, who are, who are the outcasts of the earth. Because that's what we do, right? You ever seen those videos where someone could be in tattoos or be homeless and Oh, dirty and how everyone just kept passing by them. They showed a little girl one time. She was eight years old and they just they put her in makeup, but she looked dirty like she'd been on the streets and she was walking around with a cup and people just walked by her. Mm -hmm. But then they took that same girl, dressed her up, cleaned her up, put her back out and people were stopping to help her, grabbing her hand, talking to her, the same girl. You see? The same girl. And then I saw another one where a woman who had tattoos all over her body. And she was trying to get help. She had, you know, straight clothes on and no one said anything to her. And then they put makeup all over her tattoos and they dressed her up a little bit more. And people, everyone stopped to help her. The same woman. Because we live by appearances. And not by the heart. So we miss a lot of what God wants to do and say because we do it by appearance. Yes, there. Another thing that he showed me was within the church, mm-hmm. those same people are there. Like, yeah. And they may not look dirty. Right. But they are religious. Right. And sometimes we as believers and followers and Christians good. say, you know, I'm not going to talk to that person because they're not spiritually as mature as I am and I'm going to go hang with my people. But those are the people that we need to be Absolutely. to as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't look at them the same. Right. Because especially if they have something or if they have something more than you, something you want, you're thinking, oh, well, they're good. They have an Ashton Martin. They had a, you know, McClane. They have money. They have, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They have no problems. Yes. Then it gets even more interesting when they look, the appearance looks good. The the outside actions look good, but inside, they're dying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they're just, you know, saying everything that people expect them to say, but they're inside and they don't. Because they have to keep that up. So they right. can't cry out for help. Right. And that's the big rejection y'all run into being prophetic, right? Is that y'all can see these things. <laughs> and they've done such a great job of convincing themselves nothing's wrong and making the appearance that when yeah. someone calls it out, they immediately go, no, 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 no. I don't know. Because they're just shocked, mm-hmm. you know, more than anything that somebody sees that, you know. And then they feel like, oh, no, no. No, I see it. Mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> yeah. So our ministry, I mean, some people are called to... To, I mean, we're called minister to everyone, but yeah. we also need to keep our, you know, that discernment needs to be there for the people that we're around every day. Absolutely. Our everyday circle. Absolutely. They're yeah. Also. Yeah, they are. It's true too. And it's hard, you know, it's hard to, to give a word to somebody like that because you're like, okay, God's telling me this. Yeah. Everything else I'm saying is different, and then there's fear that's like, okay, what is this? What's the reaction going to be, right? Right. Fear when man. ultimately, yeah. it quote unquote doesn't matter. I know you mm-hmm. need to do it nicely but ultimately you're being obedient to him mm-hmm. not to and that's why we read that's why i read that part that 
Some will receive it, some won't. Yeah. Yeah. You see? So, okay, so that's the first one. The second one, um, when it comes to uh, making disciples, what Jesus did, he, um, he, he, when they, 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 they knew first and foremost that he preached the gospel, he demonstrated it, but then he, uh, then he taught them. Like I said, the Beatitudes, he started teaching them, uh, discipling them. So take some people underneath your wing, okay? Take some people underneath your wing, okay? Who, who are you, who are you discipling and talking to about Christ? There is somebody you, you may not know everything, but you know a little bit more than they do that you can share. You see, so who are you taking with your wing and teaching the word to, holding them accountable, encouraging them? That's what you need to do. And then as you do that, God will give you more grace, more wisdom, more revelation, more insight. As you take on that responsibility, Amen. he'll give you more. Yeah. Okay? Because it'll keep you growing. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So you don't have to know it all, but you know a little bit more than the next person. Your family is the hardest, guys. <laughs> it is. I think that sometimes yeah, it helps us to do that first because yeah. they're the hardest. Yeah. 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 It's true. First trial is. Right. So that's what you do. You want to start. The so don't just get that person saved. Stay in touch with that person. I mean, you know, I know some circumstances don't allow for that. But if at all possible, take that person eat their wing. If they become saved, that's great. But don't just walk away and go, oh, that's it, and send them on. No, stay with them. Make sure they understand. Get into the word. Pray, teach them about what we are as Christians and what we believe. Okay, that's the, that's the second thing that you do. Okay, then you encourage. Thirdly, you encourage them to start sharing the word and discipling and and, and uh, discipling other people. And you watch them as they do it. You you kind of supervise them, right? So they check in with you. They go, Hey, Eric, I'm not sure about this, but. I thought about you and what you did the other day, so I felt like this is one of those moments, but I wasn't sure. You know, it's okay. You see, it's okay. That means something's bubbling up inside of you. There's there's something rising in you, and God's doing something. Because I was the same way with my apostle. I was like, hey, uh, Apostle Gaines, hey, check it out. So, you know, when you talked about and prophesied this person the other day, I think I had to work with somebody, but I'm not really sure. You know, and it's okay. So let them use your point of reference and check in with them. You know, let them check in with you. and But encourage them to... to to lay hands on the sick, encourage them to, to prophesy, encourage them to do those things. You know? Okay? That's third. And then fourth, there, there will become a time of separation where they need to go into what they're called to do. You see? Jesus said, it's good that I go away so the Spirit can come. And so that, because, you know, with him being there so much, they depended on him, so they still would do those things, but then they really didn't have to put all faith in everything because he was always there. But when he went away, then they actually got better. He said, it's good that I go away. Now they really have to do what he said and remember what he said and go out there and trust him. You see? So that's why I don't always show up when y'all call me all the time. It's not because, you know, I can't help y'all, don't want to help y'all, but I know I know where you are in your walk and when I need to pull back and let you right to <laughs> I know you're talking to me. You know? Because it's a funny thing, right? It's like the times, you know, the times... I really want to say and connect with you guys. You guys are like, ah, no, I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to say anything to them. And then when that relationship shifts, when I know you're there, then you're like, well, wait a minute. Why aren't you talking to me now? Now you used to call me. You don't do that anymore. You see, it's just, it's just so funny, right? But because you're mature and you're at that place now. You've seen it. I've taught you. I've watched you do it. Now you're ready. You see? And that's where you are, Tara. <laughs> that's why you don't hear me saying a lot to you. It's funny. Because, <laughs> like, I've been praying and praying and praying, and something wasn't moving in me, a spirit that I felt like was on me. And so I called Eric. I'm like, I just think I need somebody to stand with me. And then all day, we were missing each other, all day. And then God was like, you don't need Eric. <laughs> like, Amen. Keep praying. Yeah. Be persistent. And I'm Amen. like, okay. I'm not going to call him. Like, I got it. Yeah. I got it. And you remember that we were at Karen's house, right? And then you were telling me about that. And you did that's I, when it started. I, I sat there. I was like, that's, okay, keep that praying. Been that long. <laughs> it had been months, I know. months yeah. that I was praying. Yeah. He was just teaching me persistence and, you know, that I have the ability to do it and just do it. Just keep being persistent. If it doesn't go away right away, then it's not going to go right away, but it's going to go away. Amen. You can't just give up on it. So yeah, and I was definitely. It was just funny. That day was like, we were. <laughs> and I, and by, by four o'clock, I was like, 
Okay, God, I get it. <laughs> I made it through. Right, you did, and you know, and that thing manifested. So, yeah, it was just funny. So I, I you know, and my thing is, I want to jump in there and do, but I know I'm doing more harm than good when the spirit's telling me no, step back, stop. You know, let her do. And this conversation I had with Giselle recently, like Giselle, got to back up. You know. <laughs> Cause she was dealing with one of her disciples, you know, and she had to, she had to let her disciple be, you know. And I said, back up, get out of the way. You, you gotta. I know it's hard. You gotta Sorry. get out of the way, cause you're, you're gonna, you're gonna prolong it now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But there's rejoicing when, when you see that person come around. Yeah. It's a, I can't describe the feeling. Praise God. See, and it's just a trust in God, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Just trusting Him, right? So, so that's what, we, and that's that's probably going to be the hardest part for you guys is when you have to do that releasing to your sons and daughters, in the spirit. It, that's going to be really that's the most challenging part, to me, you know. It comes down to trust to God, right? It does. It's like taking your kid to college. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and that's the only way. I mean, he speaks to me through my kids, but when we took her off to college, yeah. I was uh-huh. like, I was sad, but I wasn't. Um, I was sad because. He was leaving our home. I wasn't afraid. Gotcha. He was. Yeah, that time of transition was, was there. Be yeah. Good, and I could see, you know, his future before he could even. Right. Like he did. He was afraid, so it was like, okay, I, I trust. I trust that God's got him. Right. You know? And and that's what it, I mean. Like when you let us go, you're gonna be like, I can see your future. Like I know you're you're equipped. You're good to go. Just go. Uh huh. Just gotta do it now. Yeah, and I'm always here for a point of reference, and when I need to step in, I will step in. But, you know, yeah, that's kind of where you guys are. We spent a lot of time training last year and doing a lot of different things together. And so the point, purpose of that was for you guys to go more into your ministries, you know. Uh, that's the purpose of it. How you doing, Jake? Great. Man, got all his wisdom he pulled out. He's up here today, just yesterday. Yeah, praise God, God, right? Everyone told me that yesterday I was going to be sleeping all day in so much pain. And for the first four hours, yeah, I was in quite a bit of pain. But after that, I mean, I was awake all day, no pain, nothing. Yeah, we talked yesterday for a long time. Yeah, yeah we talked yesterday. Talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, don't call Giselle after anything first. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, Ivana was like, she, she was sick. She's oh, like, man, you don't have yeah. to tell us. Oh, I'm going to tell keep, that story. Keep, keep <laughs> I said, did my disciple tell you not to come to power and authority? You know, I said, who told you that? Because uh, uh, since Savannah was sick, she had a, you know, she was going to miss today, but she had like a, a yeah. an infection. Oh, yeah. And it was just bad. She couldn't talk. And she was even on 5 a.m. prayer that morning. And she was just talk. She could barely pray. And she mm-hmm. prayed anyway. Mm-hmm. And then, so I called her later that day. She said, Eric, why are you calling me? And she was and she was in the bed. I said, the Lord said, I need to call you and pray for you. She said, oh, well, I, I, I talked to Giselle. And Giselle said... For me not to come to PNA tomorrow, you know. Right. I, I, I said, "Who told you that?" She said, "Just ain't She said, "Oh, I, I didn't tell her." Me. I told her she said, "Cause my, her. cause her husband gets sick and, and cause she, he gets stressed." And then we stressed. talk, and she goes, "I talked to Eric." And I went, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> "Before she even said anything." Yeah, she she cause she could even rejoice for her healing because she was oh, like, "Oh, Eric is gonna get before me." Before she even oh. said anything, I mean, you, you yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I talked to Eric. Oh. <laughs> I said, she told you what? Do what? Yeah, yeah she told me. And, you know, I said, no, the Lord's going to heal me. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get her, you know. So, but that's the way you want it to be with the people that come behind you. You want to make sure that you're strong in the word and they know the standard, right? They know. And, and, and again, I'm not against doctors in, in the least bit. So, please. She must know that you're talking about her. She just posted something on the group. Karen? Uh, oh, oh Savannah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She knows. See, everyone, they let the rain be their excuse today. It's okay. So, yeah, so, my, so. my mom yesterday, she because she's been staying with me since I got my wisdom teeth uh, removed, and she was telling me yesterday uh, that um, she was like, I've never seen anyone. It's like this is not how I expected Jacob to be today. Like, I've never <laughs> seen anyone recover this quickly. From, Praise uh, God. From, uh, from getting their wisdom teeth removed. Yeah, we were praying for you yesterday. Yeah. Praying for you throughout the week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's we. Mm-hmm. I, I just told her I was like, well, I got a lot of people praying for me. And I got. God. The third day she was the worst, yeah. Yeah, see, my wife worked in the dental field, so, oh, yeah. so yeah. yeah. third day. Yeah. But, but you know, Jacob, I want to say this. Uh, yeah. Lord, God, because this is the minute that you posted it, I jumped in to say, take authority for those words. Because I knew everybody was going to bless you. But right away, yeah. I said, I take authority for those words. 
bless the doctor, bless the dentist, mm -hmm. but no bad report. They got told mm -hmm. those words, and we're just going to bless you. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Mm -hmm. We stop because if we don't let the words, the power of words travel, and I'm telling you, I am telling yes. you, yes. I am telling yes. you that for a fact. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I, I live an experience a couple, a couple of weeks ago where, where somebody very dear to me spoke something out of her conscience without thinking oh. and putting it into yeah. movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know what? It was, it was disturbing, yeah. but... The Lord just is just taught us not to ignore the power of words. Right. And you know what? And and praise God. I'm so happy to see you here, man. And 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 it's just beautiful. But I just feel impressed right away to take authority over that. Bless the doctor. But take authority of those words. Just cut. Take him cut. Mm -hmm. Submitted to the obedience of Christ. So praise God, man. Good to see you here, man. Yeah. yeah. I was, you know, I, I mean, I have you know, tears in my eyes after reading everyone, everyone's prayers for me yeah. and everything because I can just feel the, the love from everyone and uh, the love of God and everything like that. And so, see, and that's what happens when you come outside of yourself and stop thinking about yourself. It blesses somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see? Yes, sir. Uh, how you doing, sir? Very well. What, what's your name? I'm, I'm Daryl. Daryl. What you got to say about the subject, Daryl? You're a man of God. <laughs> well, Thank you. Um, well, I've enjoyed this time of entering in and refreshing. Yeah. This last hour or so, I, Tammy called me or texted me. I live in North Richland Hills, so, and I'm actually. Wait, 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 you live in North Richland, Richland yeah. Hills? These jokers that live up the street? Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, we're missing about two thirds of our crew today. I had a pull in my. My spirit man, I should come and uh -huh. and um, I'm actually on my way to Mansfield to do a repair and oven. I'm a, at the moment doing some jobs, so I'm, uh, okay. I'm actually this is kind of a drive-by okay. <laughs> for me. Okay. But uh, uh, I've loved hearing everybody. And praise God, I'm glad and you're the here. The spirit that, that's here. Praise yeah. God. And, praise God, man. Know, the word says to be instant in season and out of season. And Amen. To always be willing and ready to give an account. Yeah. For the hope that's in you. That's it. And Come on. That's uh, that's where it's at. That's what you're saying. I knew the word was in you. <laughs> I knew it was I, in you. Just, uh, you mentioned parents and family. I uh -huh. went through quite a time of mm -hmm. warfare years ago, but I led my dad and mother to the Lord. Wow. And my brother. Praise and, God. Uh, we were involved in all kinds of things. You need to learn you know. how you did that. But, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, dad, dad and mom were, you know, old school. Yeah. yeah. They, they sense the past. But, um, uh, you know, old school meaning, you know, yeah. my dad was born. I was raised by older parents, honestly, grandparents. You know, okay. And they, dad was born in 1918. Wow. So, uh, well, I'm 59, but. Wow. Yeah, he had you older, yeah. Yeah, they were older, but uh, they were good people, honest, yeah. you know, in every way. But they didn't know the Lord. Right. And they got involved in all kinds of parapsychology and you know during the 70s when everybody was getting involved in uh -huh. paranormal and uh -huh. Edgar Casey. I mean I could go on I'm not gonna I'll, yeah I'll stop here but <laughs> anyway, they were in, steeped in a lot of things so right it was really interesting to see the Lord break through all that occult Ooh. and everything else well because in and in, in when I deal with people in the occult is that they're seeking power or right. you know they have a call in their life for the things that got to move in the power of God but because no one's there to really show them or teach them. Yeah. The 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 dark side woos them over, mm -hmm. you know, into those things, and they end up using their anointing for the things of the enemy, right. you know, instead of for God, because they they didn't know, you know. Yeah, I was I was telling someone that the other day, uh, saying to deliver, they didn't they didn't understand and know why they had these abilities, and then mm -hmm. the enemy came yeah. in and, and and swayed them his way before yeah. they could understand from God who they were. They're searching. Yeah, they are. Right. We used to have a. Yeah, so you can use your phone, right? right? Guys like holding a big sign. Over. Yeah, I made a comment one time. I said, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, people spouses go through their spouses' phones or information, and I said, well, you should be rejoicing. You fulfill the scripture, seeking you shall find. So you found the the thing you were looking for. Right. Praise God. What? Well, that's what it says. <laughs> you, you you looked and you found. <laughs> they, they didn't take that too well. <laughs> So, so you know, but that's but but to your point, you know, that's that's a powerful testimony, man. Well, wow. I'll, just, I'll say something real quick. It's uh -huh. interesting. Dad used to have a psychic reader. You've all yeah. Uh huh. Who would come to the house? Wow. Mm -hmm. And then my mother was an astrologer, <laughs> studying astrology. Wow. So that's the realm that I was. Wow. Transcendental meditation. Right. Uh huh. Yes. Wow. And as a young 
teenager, young boy, I started seeking the Lord. And when I came to the Lord, it was like, yeah, you talk about a continent, continental shift I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. in the yeah. life of my family. I mean, yeah. everybody went, you talk about warfare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my dad finally shook his fist in my face. He said, I'll never get like you. Mm-hmm. I'll never believe like you. If I live to be a thousand years old, I'll never. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and about two years later, his business, well, I was about, actually three or four years later, he went into financial yeah. downturn. And yeah. you know, the Lord just prophetically spoke into his life a, a mm-hmm. word in due season. And he, he came to the Lord. And There you go. And, that's and it. And everything else started. <laughs> what has, uh, uh, yeah. That's where Don, we met Brother Don. Yeah. He's a precious brother. Brother Don. Brother Don. I mean, yeah. Everything. See, anyway. I don't worry about all of it. Cause I know when God speaks, it's just yeah. I know the power of God because it brought me to my knees. It brought it brings a lot of people to their knees, yeah. you know. And that's why I don't worry about. Well, oh, you never. Uh, I'm like whatever. That's, your words have no power, you know. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, that's that's powerful. God. Um. Yeah. So. And that's the beautiful thing about when you share the gospel, right? Is that you see the power of God take all of that. You know, I was talking to Jacob yesterday. And I likened how lies are versus truth. Lies are like the elevator, right? They get there way faster, right? right. But the stairs, eventually, you'll get there up to the, you know, say you going to the hundred floor. Yeah, the elevator gets you there within two to five minutes. But the stairs, they take maybe five hours, but it'll come. So even though the lies spread faster than truth, truth is eventually, it'll get there. And then when it gets there, it just annihilates everything that has been set up by lies. Right. And so that's what we have is the truth. So it may not work immediately. It may not happen immediately. When you yeah. preach and talk to someone, you're washing them with the word. Right. You know, but the more you can live this life and you teach and you, that's why it says love is patient, you'll start seeing the change. Because the key to this is changing the inside of a person. Mm-hmm. You want to focus on the inside. All this is about the inside thing. Jesus said it's not what goes into you that defiles you, but what comes out, right? Yeah. So you want to work on their heart and you work on their heart through walking in love, sharing the word, living that word and then demonstrating it to them, you know, on a consistent basis. That's what changes people. That's what you want, because if you're just getting them saved and throw them in a church, they may or may not make it. They need someone to walk with them, to, okay. to encourage them, to build them up, to have someone to call to in the middle of the night when, think, when they want to go drink or go to the strip club or go do something wrong. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They need you to be available. Okay, and take that responsibility. They need that, you see? And then how you not know this person be the next great evangelist or the next great prophet? You don't know. Mm-hmm. You know? And so I've been blessed for to see so many great people of God called who, who have come in and out of this ministry. Uh, he posted about a friend of ours, Greg Strange. Mm-hmm. We had started, uh, we started a small men's uh, Bible study seven years ago at a Starbucks in Flower Mound. And uh, so the guy who was who was co-leading, he was leading it. We met uh, at a gym in a community where I, where I worked and trained. And so we just met, on, we were both on a treadmill and then just had the kindred spirit thing. And I just started talking to him. And then he invited me to go to a men's Bible study the next week. And so that's when I met Michael. And uh, and uh, the first day I was there, I spoke a word over everyone who was there. And so the word I spoke over him was that I said, the Lord says that you're you're an evangelist to the nations, like you're an evangelist of evangelists. I said, I see you going, uh, just traveling and winning souls and God's going to demonstrate miracles and all kind of things through you. And we were just sitting in a, in a little coffee shop, just a few guys just hanging out. <laughs> yeah. And he and in the process that he went through, uh, because he had he owned businesses, uh, he lived in a very affluent community. He had a family. You know, uh, he had a, he had a position, a pole position at the church. He was a leader in the church. I mean, so everything was just set, right? And and then as he started to 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 to, to go forward and really seek out that word from God, uh, the next thing we know, three years, four years later, he's out in Germany, winning souls and healing the sick and raising the dead and people getting out of wheelchairs and everything. Just because we took that one time, spoke that word to him, even though he had all of this stuff that we all pray and want and left to do what God told him to do. And for those of you who were in our group, that's what he that's what Michael was posting yesterday about the Greg Strange guy. That was our friend who we started this whole thing with. Wow. I remember him coming to one of the movies. Yeah, he yeah, came yeah. back. Yeah. At, at uh, the Carpus's house. Uh-huh, the Carpus's house. house. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was him. Did we baptize someone? Yeah, so 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 there was a kid, uh, Giselle had a word for, and then God showed me that he was dealing with sui- a spirit of depression and suicide, and so we prayed for him, 
He got delivered, and then he received Christ that same day, and we took him out back and dunked yeah. him in the pool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we dunked him in the pool. Yeah, we, yeah, it was the yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, but again, it's just being available, right? And just being open. And so God really wants to use you guys. Don't think that he doesn't. He really wants to use you. He really does. God wants to do amazing things for people, and he wants to do it through his children. You know, so you have to think with that mindset that God really can and want to use me. And so if you yield to that, you'll start seeing more of God operate through your life. Don't be surprised if people start to get healed, start to feel relief from headaches and pain, start to cry and weep. And, oh, wow, God, you think you said I read that in the scripture. I read in the devotion. I heard on the radio. Wow. You know, don't overthink it. Just yield to it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, so. Yeah, and as you continue to do that, what I've seen in my life is that God continually increases the grace on my life. You know, I find myself being sick less and less. You see, I find myself being worried and fearful less and less and less. I find myself going through struggles and defeat less and less and less. Why? Because the grace is increasing in my life. Because I'm doing what God's told me to do. You see, so I can walk to a room and it was sick people. I used to catch it. My son used to come with sinus infections and stuff like that. I used to catch it all the time. I used to be in teachers with Michael and couldn't talk, you know, and now it stopped, you see, because the grace is increasing, you see. Uh-huh. Yeah, so because every demon doesn't recognize and know who you are. Even though we have Christ's authority, we have to get established in it and connect with it and grow in it. Okay, so even though you have the same authority as Christ, you may not see the same things because you yourself have to grow in the knowledge of it. Okay, and then once you grow in knowledge, you see it more, right? Okay, so mm-hmm. I was in a Bible study once, and this uh, this lady said, "Oh, it took me years to come to Christ," <laughs> and she said that everywhere she went, people talked to her about Christ and tried to save her. Everybody would give her a Bible. She had a stack of like 20 Bibles in her house of people, but one day she accepted Christ. And now she's giving all these Bibles away. And, yes. and the way that encouraged me, right? And the way that encouraged me is that even when you preach the gospel to somebody, they might not say yes right then and there, but you don't yeah. know where you are on that line. You don't know if you're number one, right. number 100, right. you know? So you were a part of it, and you did your right. job in being obedient to, yeah, to plant a seed and yes. then... Yes. Yes. Free will, right? Oh, free will. Free will is the biggie, yeah, right? Can't shake, can't, can't shake them. That's what she's been wanting to shake people. Hey, you can receive this gospel. I said, I don't think people shook people, you know. No. So, so. He gave it to us. I love you. My yeah. first question to God is, excuse me, why couldn't we shake people again? Yeah, excuse me, kind sir. I know you're doing judgment with everyone who's ever lived and existed, but let me ask you one question. One question only, and I'm good. Why couldn't I shake them? Why yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's important. So um, uh, anyone want to share a testimony by bringing someone to Christ? Anyone want to share? <laughs> yeah, I okay. have a client. I'm going to go by touch you. Okay. I had a, a client. For some reason, my beauty business has turned into like ministry and church. And somehow, <laughs> I've always told her that. That's your ministry. Reason, yeah. No, but I always <laughs> say that it, it's kind of hard to minister to people and they're sitting here crying and I'm trying to do their lashes at the same time. I mean, seriously, because their lashes will not stay on because it's adhesive yeah. and they're crying. So I'm like trying to do water control over here. But anyways, um, there was this one girl that came in, and I could just tell something was wrong with her. But I try not to pry unless they open up. Um, But she had, like, a skull tattooed on her chest. She had lots of demons all over her. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. She just just told me, like, her whole life story, and she was just crying. And she's like, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. And I'm like, I do. <laughs> so it was pretty good. And I'm um, like, we were just talking. And I was telling her, well, you know, I was like, can I tell you what I see? And she's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why? How do you see that? I'm like, oh, I just see it. And um, oh. I don't know. I was just like, well, I'm like, I can tell you what you can do in your in your flesh. And I think you've been trying, but that hasn't been working. But I know God and he can help you and stuff. And she's like, okay. And then I was telling her how to, you know, confess with her mouth and believe in her heart and she goes okay okay and I'm like we'll say this prayer but I had already told her the prayer and I was like okay we'll repeat after me she goes I did when you said it the first time 
I was like, oh, okay. So I just thought it was funny. But she just said she felt so much better. Yeah. And it was just exciting. But in my mind, I was like, I wonder if now she has to go get all those skulls and demons off her body. Well, it's a process. But It's a yeah. process. And she messaged me yesterday because she was supposed to come in again. And she's just like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sick. And I'm like, of course you're sick because now you got to come in and right. see me again. Right. And, oh. um, but she's so sweet. And, like, she really wants She just wants her life to change. And it's just... I mean, just, you can just hear, like, she's just so tormented. I'm like, I remember having a life like that. It was just like nothing, everything could go wrong was going wrong. And you're like, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Some people, you just want to see them and hug them. You're, I mean, I come, I kind of told you this, like, forever. I want, like, a compound where we can have all these people just come in and move in. And, you know, because that life's hard. And you're just like, I need this all the time. Like, you do need to help people get renewed and to stay in this and I mean I think sometimes just you talking on the phone isn't enough they needed more I know when I was in there I was calling my past like Pastor Kate like at two three o'clock in the morning because I'm already getting attacked by demons in the middle of the night and she was always available but I'm like how much better would it be if like we all live together and like you can really help them come out of this and help them help themselves and you know them just know God so I don't know. I'm just like, God, I wish I could just tell you to come and live with okay. us. Okay. Well, Andrew, we're moving in. Your house is, I think, one of the biggest. So right. let's go with your house. I, <laughs> I got no issue. You got to talk to Zach. Yes, he don't care. He'll be in his room. Yeah, we saw a compound in South Africa. I'm mm-hmm. like, babe, I want this. That little place, it was a hotel. It had security guards. It had its own grill. It had its own chapel. Yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. They're going to think it's the other kind of compound. <laughs> Yeah, my five wives over here. Right. <laughs> and my 30 kids, you know. Yeah. I have a testimony that um, I like to share. And um, uh, there were at, when I, I had a business and for 18 years, and there was a young man that started working for me. He was 16 years old. And he worked for me the whole time. And um, so... Um, uh, when I started uh, spending time with the Lord and, and really just started walking, you know, I was born and baptized and raised a Catholic, but I really had no relationship with God. And so when I started um, spending time with the Lord and growing with God and stuff, and then um, God had brought me to a point, which is another story, but to the point where it was, it, I had to close the business and walk away from that business. And, and this young man who was now my vice president of operations and See, it was a, 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 a big mistake. It was um, a huge mistake that, I, that what I was doing. He said um, that um, all that Jesus stuff is just a bunch of made-up stuff, man. None of it's real. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, so closed the business anyway, and we kind of um, parted way. But, um, you know, he'd seen me walk for a little while, and so we did, separated, and then about a year and a half later, um, during after the, we closed the business, he, he reached out to me and um, wanted to know if I wanted to, uh, an opportunity to go back into the industry. And I was like, I wasn't interested. And he was really persistent and really insistent that I meet with him. And so um, we go to lunch and, um, you know, just out of respect and love for him, you know, we go to lunch and, and uh, he just kept talking about me just taking these opportunities. And I was like... Um, I don't understand it, Fred, you know, uh, what is the big deal? And um, he just started telling me that it, it's real. It's all real. I said, what are you talking about? He said, Jesus, he's real. <laughs> and um, uh, he had, um, um, shortly after we'd uh, closed the business, um, him and his family went through some financial situations. And um, um, his wife was um, religious, but um, she wasn't having any impact on him and uh so um one day he ran across a a a friend of his and and his wife and their two kids and they were homeless and he was about to lose his house he's fixing to go through foreclosure and all these things that were happening to him and he he said well we have a house for now we don't know how long but you're welcome to come stay with us and um um after that um, the next day he got an opportunity, things just started changing. And um, he said, um, um, the more he started worrying and pressing in and helping other people, the more things God started doing in his life. Amen. And he started realizing that, you know, that that was the whole situation. Well, 
Um, and so he said, Michael, you've done more for me than anybody else, even my own father. And he said, I need to pay you back for this. And he had this mindset of pay it forward. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, um, a year and a half after we started working, he died at 36 years old. Wow. Wow. Heart attack. wow. wow. But the eulogy that I gave for him at his funeral about that testimony of how he had given his life to Christ and his grandmother and so many people come up because they had no idea. They knew where he was before, but they had no idea. And it was just a, 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 a thing that brought peace to them and, 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 and was just a, a, a something that they needed to hear because they only knew Fred from before. They really had never had a chance to offer, uh, a see to what God had been doing in his life. But, you know, I couldn't understand why he was in such a hurry. Wow. You know, he, I mean, it was, it was such a, a, a mandate in his life, pay it forward, pay it forward, that he was so busy just working, the, you know, and, and um, so um, who knew that he only had so much time left? Wow. You know, wow. But, um, Praise God. So, anyways, yeah. but, but that's one of the stories I have. So. Yeah, and you brought out something so key is that, you know, a lot of times we do things to get, right? So when you work for God, don't do things uh, just to get there you are. You better show up for the day. <laughs> um, you know, but when you work for God, don't look at it as you're doing it to get something. OK, don't say, well, God, I've served, I've done, I've, you know, because then you, you're not really doing it with the right heart. You know, it's an honor to serve the Lord. The disciples counted. They, they were rejoicing. They were counted worthy to be beaten for Christ's sake, you know, in the book of Acts. So, you know, it's OK for you to talk to your father, but don't let that be the reason why you're doing things. OK, because that's not what he did it for you. He did it because he loves you, right? Amen. So likewise, you take that same love you've been loved with and you share it. And listen, I know you always have needs. We know. <laughs> That's not going to stop. You know, we're consumers, so we're always going to have something we need, something we want. But when you work for God, trust him. Yeah. Trust him. Well, love conquers all, right? Yeah. Eric, I've got the little uh, testimony about that was, you know, all of us, when we lead somebody to the Lord, but this is so important because... That's that's in with what you're saying. Disciple them. Don't just bring them to the Lord. It's keep up with them. And and this lady comes to mind because this is a beautiful aspect of it. I met her. I was you know buying grocery sourcing. I was in Whole Foods and I was with my sister. And as I was leaving this teller, she says like, "Where are you from?" And na 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 na. And it's like, "Oh." And then she says, "Can I have your number?" I said, "No." She's kidding with me. And I what? You know, like, you know, it's like, yeah, I'll give it to you. What? You know, with the personality. You know, it's like, what well, just thinking? What's going on with her? Because not, quite frankly, not many people ask me in moment later and for my number, especially right. when I'm paying for groceries. So it's like, well, I'll give it to you. Why not? And my sister's like, what is going on with her? I said, I don't know. But of course, she had a plan of action. So what happens? She calls me one day and says, listen, can I just come talk to you? I said, yeah, well, I'm, 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 I live by myself. If you feel comfortable coming over, I want to tell you about, you know, some, something that I'm, well, okay, come by my house. I said, you're comfortable. I'm a man of God, you know, we'll just fine. Okay, so we set up an appointment, came to my apartment, and she's all dressed up. And, you know, it's like, well, you look really different. Just, what's up? She says, well, yeah, I just want to make a presentation. I said, well, go for it. I said, listen, how long is it going to take you? She says, about 40 minutes. I said, I give you 40 minutes, but you're just going to give me 15 but I want all your attention. I give you 40, you give me 15. Okay. So, you know what happens? She starts to go out and just starts to pull up some charts. And have you ever been in life where you want all this? Do you want this in life? Is that, ah, I already have. Oh, okay. Next. Well, you want your life, you want to this? It's like, ah, uh, 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 done, have it. Okay. Well, so what you, so after the fourth chart, it's like, uh, how do you have all this? I say, well, I've been blessed. I have a career, but above that, I have the Lord in my heart, and the Lord is my provider. Amen. I, I like none of that. I that I have an abundance, and I mean, Amen. I don't mean to be pretentious, but just look around. It's like right. I, I said, okay, I said, are you done? She said, no, but, but but tell me. I said, sit down. Now it's my turn. So I got up into the car. This, this is what it's all about. This is what really it's all about. And I knew, yeah. I knew because I just felt it because I'm an empath. but I felt what she was feeling. Yeah. And I felt that she was hungry over the road. I said, listen, this is really simple because what you need is not written in here. What you need is written in my heart, but it's written in here, in this world of the Lord. This is what you need. I am a Catholic and a Virgin Mary. I said, I know all that story. I walk that way. But that was a detour from the truth. 
But let me tell you, this is what happens. So I ministered to her. To make, story, to make the story really short, because it was a lengthy season, I invited her to come. I used to go to a covenant church, the Spanish version, Mundo de Fe. So I invited her to come. So she came one day, and it's like I was playing in the music ministry. So she waited for me. It's like, oh, it's good to see you, uh, dear friend. Of course, I don't want to say her name. I was just about to say it, because you might hear it one day. Mm -hmm. And what happens is like, uh, uh, where are your little girls? You tell me you have two little girls. Says, They're in the school. Well, let's go get them. As I'm going up, I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit tells me like this. It's in the blood. It's like, a, what? <laughs> it's in the blood. Okay. So we go pick up the little girls and, hi, nice to meet you. They're quiet. It's like they've never been in, in school like that. And it's like, a, these are my daughters. Da, 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 da. I look at one of the girls and she's got lip. How do you call that lip? Cloth lip. Yeah, cloth lip. Mm -hmm. And I realize it's on the blood. It's on the blood. I see what it is. Okay, I understood, but it was a message. So I start to minister to her. Start to. She received the Lord. Everything was new for her. We start to pray about it, and then she goes up and up. I come to find out that her daughters. She was raped by her father. Wow. And the two girls were her father. Wow. That's why it's in the blood. Wow. Okay? So I start to minister to her, and then we have to go to deliverance. And then she told me that at a very young age, at the age of 12, she developed a woman's body, and that made her disciple to her father. And that's why her father continued to rape her with a gun in her, in her head. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so I'm seeing all this that is happening, and her family just disowned her. Nobody's talking to her, especially her mom and her grandmother. And that's the people that she loved the most. So it was a journey. And little by little, we're just going on the word. And she will come here at 2 o'clock in the morning. The Lord has always blessed me because I ministered a lot to single moms, divorced moms, women that are separated. And the Lord's always connecting me with these ladies. So, you know, it was a, a beautiful journey. And it was a lot of deliverance. In the beginning, she was a little afraid when I was, you know, you know, taking out demons. But she believed. That she taking believed. out. She out believed. Demons. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? This is the beautiful thing about it. Uh, little by little, I started. She started to come to church, and you know, she was being discipled. And I just kept on pressing, teaching her things. And she didn't know how to pray, and she had these Catholic prayers. And because I knew the, the you know, the geek over there, I was able to just guide her because you know, I was just loving on her. And mm -hmm. and uh, the beautiful thing about it is that to make the story short, uh, uh, one day uh, she asked me, uh, "Do you think I should? Uh, I should?" Uh, Pile a lawsuit against the father of my daughters because he has never provided. Say, you should. She says, but I don't want him to go to jail. I said, well, let's pray about it. So we pray about it. The day came. We I went to court with her, and she's facing for the very first time her father, and she's about child support. He never given a penny. So we go there, and and I was a little, you know, a little nervous because it was a situation I was just there for support. But the district attorney came and talked to us. Says, listen, he says, do you want to face this man? And she says, no, I'm actually, I don't really want to face him. I forgive him. We work a lot on that in forgiveness, a lot, a lot, a lot. Right. And he's like, uh, but I'm really here because I need the support. He's like, okay, fine. You know, we just, I can handle that. Everything was done through TV and, you know, whatever. And praise God, she didn't have to face it. The man started to pay it, and she had to pay retroactive for what she never paid. So glory to God. This girl is growing in the spirit. The girls are beginning to be happier. They're feeling more comfortable to make the story short. Mm -hmm. All this time, I gave God the glory that he gave me the strength to keep on ministering to her. Amen. Today, she's got a radio program wow. where she teaches people how to get out of debt. Wow. She is well known in the Hispanic community, and I know her story. Praise God. And the Lord used me for that beautiful Amen. story. That's what's important of minister to them. Amen. Not to leave them alone. She's happily married, married a man that his name is Jesus, has a little baby boy. The guy loves the little girls. And the girl has been had, had surgery, it's no longer her lips, no, no Praise longer God. like that. And it's just such a beautiful family to look at. Even her body changed. But the most important thing is one day her mom and her grandmother came and said, Listen, daughter, I'm sorry, we were just so cruel with you. As we just asked you to forgive us. The Lord restored entirely the family. Wow. So every time I go to Facebook, I see pictures of the grandmother, I see pictures of the mother, I see pictures of the girls, I see pictures of her husband. Okay. And she's got such a beautiful and a very strong <clears throat> program on the Spanish radio and teaches the community to get out of there. Praise God. Wow. Well, you got to stick to it. Yeah. That's the beauty. Yeah. Teach them. Whatever you know. I didn't know a whole lot. Right. But a lot more than her. There you go. Yes. There you go. To God be the glory. Good. Praise God. Wow. Beautiful. Praise God. Praise God. 
Yeah, so just so so just be confident that and, and if Jesus died for all of us and these people who are not saved, what hidden treasures are they hidden in them, right? It's gonna take us to help them discover why they're here, why they have purpose, why God loves them, and he wants to do it through us. And so it's so important, guys, that we walk around with that consciousness today when we go out, okay? And it's going to be some beautiful things. And so prayerfully, we'll have more testimonies like that. Uh, again, because someone ministered to an Eric Johnson. You see? Someone shared the gospel with an Eric Johnson. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see? You see? And how he leads you to do things. And, and um, you know, I, I was just thinking, listening, and, and, and uh, um, you know, it's probably... Um, Two, two, two years into what we've been doing in, in the ministry, and um, um, you know, my daughter just seems to think that um, you know everybody is my friend, you know, and everybody I meet, you know, and um, it's uh, getting close to Christmas time, and we're shopping, and we walk outside, and we have a flat tire, and I was like, man, and um, uh, and she just kind of laughed, and I said, I don't see what's so funny about it, you know, and so we go to, and I, and I don't have the tool that lowers the spare tire down. I was like, all right, well, we're going to the house. And so, um, you know, I call her, um, my ex-wife, her mother, who was living at the house at the time, to come pick us up, and she didn't answer the phone. And I clearly heard the Lord said, walk. And so I said, all right, we're walking. It was two, two and a half miles back to the house, and my daughter said, Dad, why don't you just call one of your million and one friends, like the one you met at the grocery store last night? Uh-huh. And, and I said, no, Lord clearly said to walk. I could have called this man, he'd have come. I could have called a do- half a dozen yeah. men that would have been there in a 10, 15 minutes to pick us up. But the beautiful thing is that we walked, we had a great time, man. We just had fun talking, and, you know, that was all three of my children. And um, um, so, you know, fast forward, I'm at the gym uh, Monday. And I'm sitting there working out, and I really avoid talking to women because, you know, a lot of men go in there, and they just try to pick up on women. So I minister to men, but I don't talk to the women. And um, so I'm sitting there doing um, my ab workout, and this woman um, kind of, like, gets my attention. She's sitting right next to me. She goes, oh, I saw you and your family walking the other day. It was so cute. I thought y'all were out, just, I mean, y'all were out having your walk, and I said, no, no, no. no. <laughs> We had a flat tire. <laughs> oh, if I'd have known that, I'd have stopped and picked you up. And I said, no, no, no. So we had a good time. But anyway, as the conversation carried on, you know, I could see there was a, a heavy weight and a heavy oh. burden on her. And as I started pouring into her, you know, she was struggling with uh, an issue that her daughters were wanting to have their father, their, uh, her, their you know, her ex-husband be a part of the Christmas that they were going to do. And the mother was really struggling because of the abuse and the things. And she, and she has so much fear just from he's in the same room with her. And um, as I started pre- talking to her and, and having her overcome that, this woman is bawling like crazy in the gym. She's like, and she's like, oh, I know that God had you here today, you know, for me. You know, and I said, no, sweetheart. God had me walking on the street yep. three days ago right. for us to have this conversation uh-huh. Uh-huh. today. Yeah. I had no understanding why God said walk, yeah. but now I knew when I started talking to this lady that if I didn't walk, I'd have never been on the street and we would have never had that conversation. And so a week and a half later, she said that um, her hus- ex-husband is coming to Christmas dinner and they're going to church together on Christmas Eve and they're gonna do these wow. things. And she was just, uh, I mean, it was just a totally different person. Wow. You know. But if you don't listen, that's to God it. That's about it. Why he telling you to do it? it made no sense. Yeah. You know, why walk? That's exactly yeah. it. It doesn't have to make okay. sense mm-hmm. for you because if God is telling you, He knows what He's going to do. Mm-hmm. And in your case, you saw it in three days. Yeah. Sometimes you see it in three minutes. Sometimes you see it in three years. Right. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I'm fired up. So let's pray. <laughs> and. Uh, pray for each other and um, you know some healings and stuff need to take place uh, and see if the Lord wants to speak a few words but uh, but yeah we'll, we'll get geared up ready to go uh, here in a little bit and uh, and I also want to pray for everyone who's listening to the recording because you know I know this is a big deal for all of us to, to minister because we we never feel like we're ready and we're qualified to do this 
So this is the most important thing, but the scariest thing at the same time, right? Because it's, it's sharing the gospel, and you're saying that you're an ambassador for, for God. Uh-huh. Eric, I'm sorry. I have to leave. Okay, brother. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, too. God bless you, brother. Me, too. Thank you for nice having you. me over. No problem. God bless you. Sure, I'll see you, you again, brother. Thank you for your spirit. <laughs> thank you, sir. Take care, thank brother, you. okay? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Father, we thank you, uh, Lord. Father, we, as we go out today, Father, and uh, as those who listen to this recording, Father, uh, contemplate, Father, and think about going out to share the gospel, and Father, I pray that they will, uh, that we would have a conscious and awareness of you more than our own insecurities, that we would have an awareness of you more than what we think this person needs to hear or doesn't need to hear. Father, I pray that we would think about you more before we start comparing ourselves to others. Uh, Lord, I thank you that we would just completely yield to your spirit, God. And if we feel led to pray for someone, pray for them, God. If we feel led to say God loves you, say God loves you. Father, uh, Father, I thank you, Lord, that uh, that you make yourself may manifest in us, God. And, and as we yield to you, Lord, God, we just expect for you to do uh, amazing things in the lives of people who we are going out to minister to uh, right now, Father God, whether that be um, them uh, being saved or, or, or renewing their faith, God, or uh, being healed, God, or just knowing that God is thinking of them enough today to let them know that he loves them. He's thinking of them. Uh, God, whatever that looks like, God, we just completely yield to right now, Father. And Father, I pray uh, for your children here today, God. Father, I pray you give them boldness and courage and strength right now, God. And they would trust you, God, knowing that they're here, uh, that you put them here, that you've chosen them, that you set them apart, God, to be world changers right now, Father. And God, they would not uh, think of themselves uh lowly or more higher than they ought to, Lord, but they would know that you've commissioned them, that you've sent them, you've chosen them for this very purpose, God. And so, God, I, I pray that ministry will be established today, God, uh, as we go out today, Lord. And Lord, let your grace be multiplied unto us, God. God, give us the wisdom, give us the words. God, uh, uh, connect us, draw us to the people uh, who you've uh, already called us and preordained us to minister to this day, Father God. So, Father, I pray that um, everyone be encouraged and uplifted, and Father God, we know that you've been doing amazing things today. So God, we thank you in advance right now for going before us, preparing the way, Father. Father, you said that the angels encamp around the hours of salvation. Father, we just dispatch uh, warring and minister angels uh, with us uh, in, in the location right now, Father. And Father, we just come against every form of the enemy. Uh, Father, we bind and rebuke it right now in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we pray that those who are not planning to go tomorrow will go to the mall, God, uh, so they can receive ministry right now, Father. And God, I thank you now. And Father, also, if there's something we need to receive also while we're there, Lord, mm -hmm. Father, we open ourselves to also, God. Uh, so, God, I, we just thank you right in advance. Father, you said if we acknowledge you in all of our ways, you will direct our paths. So, God, we thank you for directing our paths, God. Mm -hmm. So, God, I bless them right now. Um, I come against every uh, spirit of fear, doubt, and disbelief. And I speak faith, love, and encouragement right now to each and every one of them, Father. And God, we thank you for being with us and for sending us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.